Hi, it's Anne here, and today's video is a Get Ready With Me featuring dollar store products. So I have to thank uh, Nancy Jean here on YouTube. Her channel is Aging Gracefully. She's also a fellow Canadian in Edmonton, and she kindly sent me some of her favorite products or favorite brands that she's pulled from, I think, Dollar Tree and dollar stores. Um, and I'm excited to try these things because I love affordable makeup. Also, she did send me these earrings, so super cute. Love a little gold hoop. And these are different than any of the other earrings I have, so it's perfect. Some of these products are not from the dollar store because I don't have everything that's like dollar store, but everything is at least drugstore or affordable. I tried to find... The only thing is that the exception to that is my foundation because <laughs> I realized when I did my like most affordable versus my most expensive makeup, in my most affordable I, I was like I really don't have like super affordable foundations um, so we're going with a L'Oreal one today but to start with that um, we are going in with this sponge or going to use this sponge going in why do we say going in we are going to use this sponge I realized when I was filming this and I was like going to say this name I was like I don't think I've ever said this word out loud before antimicrobial antimicrobial <laughs> antibacteria sponge. Um, so it is infused with silver and this is what it looks like. I've already wet the sponge. I love, I just want to say like, how pretty is this? You know, Beauty Blender, you could take some tips. <laughs> Do some cool stuff like this. Um, very Beauty Blender size. It feels a little different than a Beauty Blender. It definitely, I don't know how well you can see in the packaging, like doesn't, it won't fit back in there. Um, it did grow in size, but not a whole lot, but it did grow in size. Get in with this foundation. The foundation that I'm going to use is the L'Oreal True Match in C2. Just going to dot it on, go pretty light with this. I don't want to, don't really want to spend too much time on this foundation, but I did want to test out the sponge. I've always wanted to buy, what is it, the Paw Paw sponge or the Shop Miss A. Like, there's other alternatives to the Beauty Blender. I just have not made those purchases yet. Tell me what sponges you like to use that are not the Beauty Blender and they are affordable. <laughs> Although I have been kind of going back to using brushes and you know what's really weird? Okay, <laughs> everybody, like my brother's always paranoid about this. I started using one of those like paddle brushes recently because I was, again, I was like, I don't want to wet my sponge. What brush can I use? I was like, oh, I've got my paddle sponge or paddle brush that I haven't used in a long time. And then I swear the next morning I got an ad on YouTube for the Artiste brushes, which were like the original, like the expensive ones. And I was like, that's weird. That's weird. <laughs> Cause I don't think I've seen a video for those in like ages. Or like, I don't think I've seen anybody like talk about those brushes in a long time. So it was just, number when they were like super hype and everyone was all over them. Seems like, I feel like too, when I watch like some of the more makeup-y artist people, they're definitely using brushes more than sponges, it seems like. That's the vibe I'm getting lately. Um, I'm just gonna add a little bit more to my cheeks here. Just a little bit more coverage in the center. Uh, like in this sponge though. Good sponge, definitely. Um, Look, I think very rarely do I come across a bad sponge, but I can think of, I did buy like elf sponges a few years ago and they were like, like even when they were wet, they were like hard and it was like, bam, bam, bam. Like it was way too aggressive. But yeah, I think sponges are great for, again, kind of going for more of a sheer look. Again, if you're not a makeup artist, I feel like you get a better blend. Um, I feel like brushes, one thing that I'm learning with brushes is the type of brush does matter because I've been playing with that Danessa Myrick's uh, pink powder and kind of using it under my eyes and definitely brush matters. If you use too dense of a brush, you get too much product and ooh, it does not, <laughs> does not look good. So it's interesting how tools can matter to a, to a degree, if that makes sense. I forgot to mention, I do have eyebrows on already and I did again, kind of go affordable with this. I use the Wet n Wild ultimate brow kit. I think this was like three or four dollar. Like it was super cheap. So yeah, I do have this in my eyebrows and I also have this. I've been going back to this. So I bought this a while ago. It's the, it's just like a hair gel, but I'm kind of liking it as an eyebrow gel. I think this was like a viral thing at one point. My only issue is this is a giant package to put like on my desk with like my makeup. It's kind of annoying. So I was contemplating like squeezing some of it out and putting it in like a little tub, but I'm like, Will that compromise the product? Will it dry out? I don't know. 
but I'm gonna try it, I think, because I hate having this sit on my desk and it prevents me from using it, if that makes sense, because it's awkward and big and ugly and it doesn't, doesn't look good. <laughs> um, and takes up space, basically. Quickly gonna put some powder on and then we will move on to the rest of the product. So this is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Translucent Powder. Again, this was my own product, but it's like the most affordable powder that I have. I'm just gonna dust this all over and get on with our lives. So next up is gonna be eyeshadow and she sent me two, two eyeshadows to try. So I'm pretty excited about this because I'm like, which one do I wanna try? Which one? One is more like neutral, um, brown tone and then this one's definitely more pink tone. I'm definitely leaning towards this one because you know I like a pink eyeshadow. I like pinks. I feel like I suit pinks. Um, this is LA Colors, which I haven't really tried a whole lot from LA Colors, but I'm gonna open both of them and swatch both of them. Oh, I just noticed that these do have names on this. So this one's called, oh, other side, Playful. And then this one is called Traditional. Give this little guy a swatch first. Go in, now swatches with eyeshadows don't necessarily mean they're good or bad. I found, I talked about this with the By Terry palette that's like stupid expensive, that it didn't swatch great. But then when I applied it, I was like, oh, oh, that's nice. So there's a couple of the swatches there. Again, very light, kind of what I expected or anticipated, not highly pigmented. But I feel like, again, I'm a, I'm one of those people that high pigment is not necessarily my like end all be all if that makes sense like if you're in a rush and you're going to the office or you're just going out like shopping you don't want to think too hard so sometimes something that's like not super pigmented is not a bad thing i like how there's two sort of these are like sort of deeper sort of purpley mauvey mauvey these two shades right here right here so yeah you have almost like sort of warmer ones and then like slightly cooler ones it's good little balance of color anyway not going to be super dark but I think a nice balance of colors there. And then we'll swatch on my other hand here. Won't do all the shades of this one. That's, this is what this one looks like. Doesn't that look cute? This would be like great for travel. Let's just swatch. Everything kind of looks sort of matte, maybe a bit satiny. You're not getting any like high shine with these, but you're definitely getting like, ooh, ooh, that one was surprising. <laughs> This one definitely, okay, that shade was a little bit less impressive, but I mean, it's close to my skin tone, so hard to see. Yeah, that orangey shade kind of really came out of the gate there. A couple other shades in there, again, very nice and soft. I feel like, again, easy for somebody that's new to makeup or doesn't have a lot of time for makeup. Just do a couple more swatches here. Some of the deeper shades. Oh yeah, that one came out real good. Look at that. They feel nice, they feel nice. They don't feel chalky, they feel nice. So I like how they feel. Now I kinda wanna use this one. <laughs> I'm the most indecisive person ever. Let's, let's, let's go with shades in both. Let's just play here. So I will say these definitely have that like classic makeup scent and I don't know how to describe it, particularly this one. It, this takes me back to like being a child, like, my mom's makeup, her like slapping stuff on my face for like dance competitions. That's what this one smells like. This one doesn't have that same smell. I don't know what that is though. Just like, it's a cosmetic. It's almost like a powdery, like baby powder smell, almost. All right, let's go in with, I'm gonna go in, I really wanna play with this shade. Like this shade is really drawing me. So we're gonna go in with that in the crease. Just using some random brushes that I grabbed. <laughs> They were the clean brushes. So that's the brushes we're gonna use. I didn't put any primer down. Um, we're just gonna go straight in with eyeshadow. We're just playing today. So I don't really, I'm not looking for super longevity at this point. If I used an eyeshadow primer, I know I would get more longevity. I've already done multiple tests on that for myself. I know eyeshadow primer for a lot of people, your, your mileage might vary. It depends on how dry or how oily your eyelids are. Um, kind of what your day is like. <laughs> what you're doing in your day. I feel like that's looking really pretty. I like that. I like that a lot. We're just gonna go all over with this in the crease here. So, I won't just talk about makeup today. I like to kind of give a little bit of life updates in my get ready with me. Um, the big news, and I've already cried enough, so I won't cry, that Angus was adopted. Yeah, I, I might cry. <laughs> 
again. Um, I really miss him. Uh, this one, this one hit harder than most. Um, I fostered like, I would say a dozen, no, probably like 10, 10 animals at this point between cats and dogs. And some hit harder than others. Uh, some you just really, and I feel like especially in the last, cause it was kind of a weird, it was a very short foster and it was like, I had him for like about a week and a half, two weeks, and then he had to go for surgery. So he was like recovering from surgery for like two weeks. And then I had like another couple weeks with him. So I kind of went through different phases with him. And I feel like, you know, post-surgery, post him like feeling better and healing, which he like healed like a champ with that. Um, I was expecting, I was really worried about him because he being a senior and stuff that there'd be, you know, problems, but no issues with, yeah, he had dental surgery <laughs> to take all his teeth but one. <laughs> So again, advice to any pet owners out there, take your pets in for dentals. If they don't have, like my cats, I used to give them dental food. Um, like it was called TD, which I forget the brand, but like it was like a vet dental thing. But if your pets, like if they don't eat a lot of like dry food, uh, dogs, if you don't like it and it's hard to brush dogs teeth, take them for dentals. Cause yeah, he had to have all his teeth pulled but one. This is turning out a little brighter on the eyes. I don't know how well that's showing up on camera. It's maybe a little pinker, but it's a nice cool, a nice cool pink. So yeah, he was adopted. Um, and I'm really heartbroken because yeah, we were just, the last couple weeks, like as I was saying, he's healing. I felt like we were gelling really well. Like we were, we were, we figured out our vibe. We figured out our routine and, and then he got taken away. <laughs> um, I'm going to go in with this color. I feel like this is going to work well. I don't know how well that shows up on camera, but it's got a bit more of a purple. It's like a brownie purple compared to the other shades. Does that make sense? Or it's like a cooler, like gray brown. Does that make sense? Um, okay, I didn't realize I had an expensive brush in here, but we're going in with an expensive brush. This is a Wayne Goss brush. Thought I pulled like all cheap brushes. Oh no, and I have a Sonia G brush too. Sorry. <laughs> I was trying to aim for like all affordable stuff. That did not work. I also think too, if you have mature eyes, kind of going in with satins are kind of your best bet. I feel like between mattes and satins, sometimes if you go too shimmery, I mean, you do you, I do all shimmers too, but if you're kind of like self-conscious that your eyes are a bit creepy, sometimes like an all over lid shimmer is maybe a bit too much. And going in with, and I feel like sometimes a matte can be like almost drying looking. So a satin shadow is probably going to be a good, a good bet. I like the way that's looking. Nice and easy. Nice and soft. I feel like with my eye shape sometimes too, I get sort of weird shadows and weird like shapes <laughs> with the color. And sometimes having stuff that's softer and not too pigmented kind of looks better, if that makes sense. Yeah, I'm really missing Angus. Um, I really wanted to keep him. And you know, there's part of me secretly hoping that the adoption would fall, fail. Although if it failed, I mean, we would have found somebody else. The main reason why I didn't keep him and I talked to the adoption people, like the agency about this, the rescue, was I really did feel like he belonged in a home. I feel like that would be his happy place is to have a backyard and to have easy access to outside to maybe even have some pet siblings. So, so yeah, and I don't have any of those. I mean, the pet siblings I could have rectified, but some dogs, and this is the thing, like with some pets and some, even cats, some are just not suited to like an apartment or condo, which is what I live in. And you kind of have to like accept that. And some are, and it's not even size or breed. It's literally the dog. You kind of each take each dog's personality and their behaviors to figure that out. And like with Angus, I just kind of knew, although that was the thing, like he was adjusting and he could have adjusted. Like he was adjusting quite fine. I felt like the, near the end there, I was like, we figured out a vibe. And he sort of was adjusting to what condo life is like, what our routine is like. But alas, he's gone. And I'm happy for him, but I'm sad for me. So I'm back to, there's no pets in the house right now. I'm gonna go in with this shade right here. And I'm just gonna use my finger and put that on the lid here. Again, it's a bit of a satin type shade. It's not, I don't know if you can see that on my finger. It's not matte. It's more of a satin. I realize I've got fallout all in here, which is not good. Oops, but that's the way I was 
my fault for like just dusting the eyeshadow on. I normally do, when I do my makeup on a day-to-day -day basis, I normally do my eyes first so that if I have any of this sort of like fallout that I can clean that up before I put on foundation. And then if I put on, when I put on foundation, it like covers all that up. I feel like this is very Valentine's vibe eyeshadow. I'm just gonna take a little bit of foundation and tidy that up. So I'm just gonna go in with this Color Workshop liner again, super affordable. <laughs> Not really dollar store, but oh, fire trucks. Uh, not really dollar store, but affordable and in the same price range. So there will be future fosters. Um, I don't know when because I am planning planning some vacations. Uh, so I already have booked my Vegas trip in May, and then I'm trying to coordinate with friends. There's at least two of us going. It's one of those things like everybody's like, yeah, 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 let's do this. And then as things whittle down, it's like, uh, I don't know if I can. And I'm, I'm, I'm bad for that too. I've been on that side of like, yeah, let's do this. And then I realized, no, I can't do it. Um, and yeah, we're trying to plan. It's probably going to be late February, early March, maybe mid March. I would, I was ready to go like last week. Uh, <laughs> so when my friend mentioned it, cause I'd been thinking about, I'm like, I, I, I just want to go like to somewhere warm, to an all inclusive, just like take a break. Something that's like not too expensive. And then yeah, over the holidays, my friend friend's like, Hey, I might have a deal. And I was like, yes, yes. <laughs> you don't have to even finish that sentence. I'm in. So that kind of, plays into being able to take a rescue or not. I'm gonna just pull this, this is I think the darkest shade in this palette and use it as a bit of an eyeliner. I'm just gonna kinda do a bit of an eyeliner with uh, like an angled brush. I'm not gonna like wet this brush or anything. We're just gonna go in like this. But yeah, it, it kind of affects if you can get a rescue or not because you don't wanna be like, yeah, I have a res, I, I wanna foster. But by the way, I'm going to be gone for these few days. So if it's going to be a foster that's because, you know, some fosters like I had ooh, caught some fallout here. I had Luffy for four months. So some fosters you have for a really long time. So it's like I'll be able to foster, but I'm only going to be available for this short period of time. So I might I might wait until after that first trip, because after that first trip before the second trip, I should have enough time for a foster. But again, I have to coordinate that with the rescue. And I hate that. I don't want to put that pressure. I never, ever want to put that pressure on the rescue. Because it's like, okay, I can foster, but I'm not available these days. So either find temporary home for the foster, which is fostering a foster, which is always a bad idea. Because you're moving them around. Or pushing them to find an adopter, which is never a good situation. You want to find the right adopter at the right time. Um... That's not working on this eye as well as this eye, and I don't know why. <laughs> What's wrong with me? There we go. There we go. I should have wet the brush to do that, but whatever. I didn't bring anything here to do that with, so we're not doing it. Um, I do have a mascara to play with. So I didn't even say the brand. So those were LA... Um, I like colors. I don't know what, oh, Be Pure was the brand for this. And then I think this is Ioni. Ioni, I think that's the brand on the side. It says instant volume and thickness. We will see. I will reserve judgment on this because I know me and mascara, generally the first, first time I use the mascara, I'm not happy with it. But once it dries out a little bit, I am much happier with it. I will say like affordable mascaras can be really hit or miss. Like the Color Workshop mascaras were terrible. Um, but I have a Mana Kadar mascara that I've been kind of surprised with. Like somebody mentioned that in my comments. They're like, you know, I actually like that mascara. And it's like, all right, uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. And yeah, I've been happy with it. Like I don't, I, don't, I wouldn't repurchase it. I don't love it, but I'm like, it's doing the job. It's doing a pretty good job. So I am going to curl my lashes because that's just what I do. Um, and this is a Tweezerman. So again, not an affordable lash curler, but I do have affordable one. Um, it's actually at home, like my family home. So, but I do prefer this Tweezerman one. It just fits my eye shape a little bit better. The one I think at home is from Quo Beauty, might it might be, or Kit, which I think was a Rexall or a Walmart brand. 
it isn't quite the same shape as this Tweezerman one. So that's kind of a thing that's unfortunate because I don't know how you test that. But if you buy uh, one of these and you don't like how it fits on your eye, try another one. But like, I like this one. There's one that Emily Noel always mentions. I want to say, yeah, I can't think of the name of the brand um, that she really likes. But yeah, I, I do appreciate it. Maybe it's a Sephora one, actually. I think the other one I have might be a Sephora one. Anyway, let's try this mascara. Let's see what the... It's called Dramatic Black Mascara. Ooh, this is interesting. <laughs> this is a very... I wish I had something to compare this to. Regular. Like, this is a very large. Very large. I forget which one. Is it Color CoverGirl? That stretch and strengthen they call like a Christmas tree. This is a Christmas tree shape. Like that's that's a Christmas tree shape. Um, so let's go in with this and see how she does. Again, I kind of reserve judgment when they first open because they're gonna be pretty wet, and I feel like when they're super wet, you don't get a lot of volume. Um, but once they start drying out, they get better. I don't like the shape of this brush um, because <laughs> I just hit my face. It's kind of large and I have a small face, but I like the style. Like I like the bristly, I like the bristly brush. I just wish it weren't quite so fat. Although maybe that's good for the tube and getting out product, but it was a little scary using this. It was a little bit of a large object coming straight at my eye. We'll go back, we'll go back into the tube for this eyeball. So yes, of course, when I get a new foster, you will hear all about it. I actually also have a separate Instagram. Um, it's called Havana Harley because that was <laughs> Harley's original um, Instagram, and Harley was a Havanese, so Havana Harley. But. Yeah, like speaking of dogs, like Harley was a great apartment dog. Harley was an anywhere dog. House, mansion, farm, condo, mobile home. He would have been fine anywhere. He was one of those dogs. He was like, I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> I like, think he was such a relaxed, easygoing dog. I mean, I also realize now after the fact he was on drugs like the entire time I had him, um, like pain medication. So that probably had something to do with it, but yeah, he was like just an anywhere dog. And it was funny, near, like, I want to say near the end. I keep saying near the end. It's the end of my time with Angus, he was doing certain things or we were doing certain things. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is very reminiscent of Harley. Whereas it was very interesting with Luffy. Luffy was completely the opposite of Harley in so many ways. And not in a bad thing, like in a bad way. It was just, he was just such a different dog. And I hate comparing them because I'm not looking for... A Harley replacement if that makes sense so there's a lot of things about Angus that made me realize I was like because like at first he was a little bit more energy that I was anticipating whoa <laughs> got a little windy there <laughs> that was unexpected I don't know if you heard that that was my windows creaking back to the makeup for a second uh, it looks pretty good I mean not as dramatic as I I like because I, I like more dr drama, but I feel like once that dries out a little bit more, we're gonna get something with it. So I'm happy with that. Um, thank you, Nancy. <laughs> thank you for the pick. We're going on to blush now. We're gonna do two different colors because uh, there's two different colors. <laughs> so again, thanks. Thanks for the two blushes. Do you know me? I'm like blush addict right now. I think everybody went through that phase. Like what happened to us? Never wore blush in like my 20s, and then all of a sudden I have like 30 blushes. <laughs> so, so the first one again is that P, B, P, P Pure. P, B, B Pure. So it's the same brand as this one. And they call it the Luminizing Blush, essentially ageless. I like that. Uh, luminizing Blush infused with Camellia oil. And this is in Poppy Pink. So this one's more cool toned and this one's definitely more warm toned. So we're gonna do the cool tone one first on one side. So yeah, when I get a foster, you'll know. <laughs> I'll be like, look at my foster. I'm like that with every dog. Look, look at it, look at it, it's so cute. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna have to ruin this packaging because I can't open it without yeah, ripping it, sorry. There we go, there we go. Oh, it's cute. Very like 
Maybelline, I feel like, in its style. Or like Illa Masca. So we're just gonna go in with this. What kind of, uh, I don't have a good blush brush. Why don't I have a good blush brush? What was I thinking? Just grabbed what was clean. So we're gonna go in with this guy, which is sort of an angled. I definitely use this for bronzer, which I am gonna go in with bronzer after, but we're gonna go in with this guy. It's very, I don't know how well that shows up on camera, how bright this is, but it's very bright. I'm liking it. I feel like this is gonna be more suited for summer, but oh, here goes. Ooh, beautiful. That's a really nice pink. I feel like I'm doing an unintentional Valentine's makeup. <laughs> oh, I went in hard there. You can definitely build this up. This is very pigmented if you want it to be. We're gonna go for it. I like that. And I wanna be able to see the, the difference between the two shades, so. So yeah, other stuff that's going on. Um, so filming, <laughs> so I'm, I kind of noticed this is a different, different bit of a different setup. Um, I do sometimes do the background and I'm filming like again in front of my window, natural light. I am filming with my Sony ZV-1. Normally I've been filming with my Canon. I was trying to film with this, then I flipped back to my Canon because I'm more comfortable with it. And I want to get more comfortable with this camera and figuring it out. So <laughs> we're back to trying with this one for now. We'll see how it goes. And you might see like my setup be different. I'm playing with stuff. I'm trying to figure stuff out. I want to be, be a bit better. So this is the other blush. Sorry to interrupt myself. I don't, I'm trying to figure out the brand on this. Oh, it's Ioni. So it's the same as the mascara because it's Ioni up here. And like it says pigmented color, soft texture, buildable and blendable, complements all skin tones. Oh, okay. So it says, <laughs> I'm a bit confused. It says pink, gold, or rose. I think that's supposed to be like French. So pink gold is the shade. Blush with a pow. Formulated with su supentine micro. My oh my gosh, what is this? Micronized powder pigments for easy and bundable application. Soft and lightweight to give you a perfect natural flush. Complements all skin tones. Oh, I only lashes has. I'm just gonna put that on the screen there if you're interested. The brand has like socials. Oh, this is so cute. I was not expecting that. I wondered why the box was so big because it's like, like a benefit style blush. How cute is that? Oh my gosh, Nancy, how did you find this? This is so cute. I did not expect that. I love it. I love that packaging. It's, it's got a magnet. So cute. And yeah, this one's definitely more warm tone. We're just going to go in the same brush. I'm kind of just Dusting it off on my little towel here. This one's got like almost, it almost has like um, NARS orgasm vibes. So you might see like my filming setup just being, being weird. Um, like this is, this is driving me crazy that I can't get this like smoothed out. I think I need to buy more clamps. Um, ooh, I went in hard. <laughs> Pay attention, Ann. Yeah, this one's way more pigmented <laughs> than the other one. Definitely more of a warm tone. We're gonna have to blend that out a little bit with powder. Definitely has a bit of a sheen to it. I don't know how well that shows up on camera, but I like that. It's definitely like, I would say that this is a good dupe for NARS Orgasm. I do have that, I don't have it here, but I should do like a swatch to see, but I would definitely guess that those are basically a dupe for each other. Ooh, we went way too hard. <laughs> Let's pull that back a little. I'm just going with my powder brush that has a bit of powder on it still. Soften that out. But I hope you can see, like this is definitely a cool toned blush and then this is warm toned. I personally, again, I am cooler toned in like my undertone, so I feel like I suit cool tones really well. Um, but this for me, like once I have a bit of a tan, I feel I feel like, or if I'm doing like more of a warm, like a, if I did, if I chose more of a brown eyeshadow look, I think this would have looked better with that combo. I feel like you had some thoughts there, Nancy, like kind of went warm tone and cool toned with like your choices. And I, I like that. I like where you were, where you were going. If that was intentional, well done. I did not, did not notice that until now because speaking of which actually, yeah, we're going to, Finish off with lips, but then I'm probably gonna go back in with bronzer and highlight to finish up the look. 
or maybe we just leave it. Maybe we just leave it. Um, two, two lipsticks here to play with. These again are that Be Pure brand, essentially ageless, hydrating lipstick infused with serum. I think it's a, B, a B5 serum and paraben and phthalate free. I always like that phthalate free. <laughs> Um, discover the Essentially Ageless collection, exclusively formulated for mature skin. Hello. And <laughs> infused with serums, natural oils, and vitamins. I am mature skin, by the way. Sometimes I act immature, but my body tells me otherwise. Um, feel confident in Essentially Ageless lipstick infused with vitamin B5 serum designed to help your lips keep your lips hydrated. Cool. I like that. Um, all of these were like manufactured for US or Canadian companies, but made in China. I think everything, everything is made in China. So we have two shades here called Pink Lily and Blush Rose. Packaging looks very much like a L'Oreal or CoverGirl type lipstick. It's very light though, very light. The one thing that's gonna be a challenge, okay, I'm gonna have to keep this. I just opened this one. There's no label on the bottom, <laughs> nothing that's telling me. So this one, this one is Pink Lily. So we're gonna keep this separated. So Pink Lily looks like this. Till I put a label on it, because I don't wanna mix them up and then be confused. And then this one was Blushed Rose. Woo, that one's bright. <laughs> that one's very bright. I don't know how well that shows up on camera, but this one's called Blush Rose. And then Pink this side by side, and then I'll swatch both of them as well. I feel like the Pink Lily is, is more my vibe especially right now. This one's more of a summer, again, warm toned, cool toned. Um, so let's swatch them. I should have swatched the blushes on my hand too, but I feel like, I feel like we got that on the face. Oh, these feel nice. I like that they're like more of a sheer type balmy type lipstick. Yeah, they feel like kind of like a lipstick lip balm hybrid. So, that one is the Pink Lily, and that one is the Blush Rose. So we're gonna go with Pink Lily first, or sorry, Blush Rose first, because I think I wanna keep on, I think I'm gonna go for the Pink Lily. It's gonna be more my vibe for this makeup. I think that looks good. Normally this would be a color that I'd be like, oh, like I'd open it and be like, oh, not sure that's gonna look good but it ended up being a bit more pink toned on me, which I think works better for me. It's not too orangey. Um, and I like the way this feels. It's definitely more of like one of those lipsticks you can throw on without really thinking too hard. And it also feels hydrating, which feels nice on the lips to like reapply. So that is Blushed Rose and that is Pink Lily. So yeah, this is more a me shade. Um, it's got a little bit more depth to it. It's a little bit more I was gonna say blushy, rosy, even though this is the, the lily one. Um, yeah, it just has a bit more depth to it where I, I gravitate towards this color more often, but I did, I actually really liked that other one once it was on. Um, I think because the other one's a bit more sheer too, if it had been a higher pigment, I feel like this one's a higher pigment. It works better with this color for me. Um, they definitely have that lipstick smell though, like old school, straight up grandma lipstick. Uh, which most drugstore lipsticks are gonna be like that. They don't bother me. Um, that usually fades fairly quickly. Let's blend the blushes a little so we have like not two different colors. And I think I'm gonna, I think I am gonna put a bit of bronzer and highlight on just to finish up the look. I did pull out um, my color workshop bronzer and highlight. Again, super affordable. So I'm gonna throw these on and then we'll wrap up this video. All right, we're back with the completed look. I just sort of blended the two blushes together. I did go over with a little bit of powder to like <laughs> soften that down a little because it was a lot of blush. Um, I actually did swatch the two blushes as well, just so you can see the difference. Um, this one is definitely like not just color tone, but this one's more of a matte and it does feel a little bit drier to the touch compared to this one, uh, but I wouldn't say it's dry to the touch. This one definitely has more of a, what do you call it? like. I don't know, it's just a bit creamier in a sense, even though it's a powder, if that makes sense. But you can also see that luminosity to that blush, like that gold shift. Like this one, 
when I was washing on my hand too, I was like, it made me really think about like everybody going crazy for the, like the viral like Dior blush. And like, how much did they spend for that blush compared to like, look at the pigment on this. The color looked beautiful. I feel like I'm getting probably, no one would know that this is not the Dior blush or not the NARS orgasm blush. You know what I mean? Like once you put them on your face, you get the same effect and no one's really gonna know that you're using something from the dollar store. So yeah, I'm really like the blushes I feel like are the standout on this like they really wowed me like I love the packaging of this one how cute is that um, and this one's nice too in terms of like the color like I really like this it's a very bright pink and again that was sort of like that viral pink that everyone was going for last year and I feel like yeah you can get it at the dollar store so good good picks Nancy Dean um, the sponge is good I wouldn't say like this is gonna top my beauty blender but I feel like this is functional like I again I've purchased uh sponges that I'm like oh I cannot use that sponge but this one will definitely get into the rotation for me it doesn't entirely replace my beauty blenders but it's definitely a like comparable product to use um what else the mascara again I'm gonna reserve judgment on mascara I think it's turned it looks pretty nice um it's definitely not a dud. Like it's not like I remember the color workshop one or even like the wet and wilds big pop-up. When I put that on, I was like, oh, <laughs> like right away. I was like, oh, whereas this one I was put on, it's like, oh, okay, we're good. Like we're good to start. Like it's got a good start and that makes me feel confident that it's gonna be good to continue going. And the two eyeshadow palettes, again, I need to play with these a little bit more, but pretty happy with like how they blended nicely like it's one of those things like if you don't want to think too hard you just want to throw an eyeshadow on that's quick and easy these these are where it's at i feel like the, my i would criticize this one mostly from a color workshop or a color workshop an la colors choice i feel like for having 12 pans in this they could have made a bigger tone range like from light to dark if that makes sense it's very as a lot of mid-tones that are probably all gonna look fairly similar on the eyes um i mean i guess you can use that white shade to like brighten up some of the stuff but then there's nothing super dark that's like an emily noel criticism and i normally don't really care for a super dark it doesn't really bother me personally but for this to have a bit more versatility versatility it should have maybe a little bit, but that was that that was that orange shade that like swatched real well. So I need to like try it. It's not orangey orangey, it's like a brownie orange, but it definitely has more of an orange tone compared to everything else. Um and the lipsticks, I like I really like this. Feels really nice. Um I definitely will play with those more. I love a good bullet lipstick. I'm always a fan. So again, a big thank you to Nancy Jean for sending me some products from Dollar Store that she wanted me to try out. I've really enjoyed playing with this. And yeah, you can check out her channel and her uh, Instagram. I'll put her information down below. And yeah, if you like this video, feel free to give it a little thumbs up down below. And if you haven't already, I would love it if you subscribe to my channel here in Toronto, Canada. I hope you're doing well, and I'll see you sometime soon. Bye.